Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and this is the Hibby R4 digital audio player. This is a 249 US dollar device. It was sent to me directly from Hibby. They have asked nothing in return other than a fair and honest evaluation of this piece, which you are about to get. I am an affiliate link member with some retailers who carry this, so I will put affiliate links in the description down below where you can buy this if you like my description of it and you want to help support the channel. Please consider using one of those affiliate links. I will get a small kickback and I only put affiliate link money back into the channel. I thought that this was a pretty solid little device here, particularly if you're an IEM user who is looking to take your music on the go. This is like one of the cheapest fully featured audiophile grade digital audio players out there and I'll explain what that means in the review but I think if you fall into that use case you are going to want to pay attention to this. So Without further ado, let's say let's do shameless self promotion and get on with it. Hello. I'm one of the reasons that Wave Theory can't spend all of his money on audio gear. He wants you to know that your support is vital for keeping the channel running. So if you enjoy Wave Theory's bussin review riz and no cap review style and want to encourage him to stay in the basement so I don't have to listen to his dad jokes as much, like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also send him a donation on PayPal or sign up for the Patreon. Links are in the description. Now on to the review. All right, the Hibby R4, and you kind of see my reflection there. Hello. All right. It's a pretty simple device with a unique styling. So again, like 250 US dollars is in entry level ish territory for like what I would call a fully featured digital audio player or DAP, right? Um, what does that mean? So let's just, let me just say for a moment, when I say a fully featured DAP, what do I mean? Like Hibby has, like I think it was their, uh, they have a hundred dollar entry level unit and I am blanking on the model number, but I have a review for it that I'll put down in the description below. And that was just a very stripped down DAP that had their own operating system on it. It could only have like pre-installed apps for uh, Tidal and Spotify and was Cobuzz on there? Actually, I don't think Spotify was on there and so forth. So it was just very limited in what it could do. Then I've also reviewed the M300 from them, which was like an iPod touch, but with an Android operating system in it. And it was also like small, had a really tiny screen um, and like the onboard audio features on it. It was only single ended and it was like not a, a dedicated audio output in the same way that something like this is. Right. So those two pieces that I just mentioned, I think it's the M100, if I'm going from memory, is like $99. The M300 is $200. And now you go to $250 and you get the R4. And this is a full Android 12 based uh, a digital audio player in here. And so it's like the full real deal, which is kind of why I'm referring to it as like the, edit, the entry level of like a fully featured DAP. All right. Uh, or at least a fully featured audio file DAP. All right, plenty of features on it. Let's run through those real quick. The processor in this is a Snapdragon 665. The digital to analog conversion is handled by four ESS ES9018 C2M DAC chips. The amplifier section in it uses, I believe it's either four or six op amps and 16 transistors. Hibby claims it is a uh, class A amplifier and it delivers up to 525 milliwatts of output power into a 32 ohm load from the balanced output, but less than half of that a rated 165 milliwatts into a 32 ohm load from the single ended output. It can decode DSD up to DSD 256 and it uh, can decode PCM files up to 32 bit 768 kilohertz. It also has three gigabytes of RAM and I believe it's 32 gigabytes of memory, internal memory built on it. The memory is of course expandable by this micro SD card slot here which I believe can handle up to two terabyte micro SD cards. I put a one terabyte SD card in there for review purposes just to copy a bunch of music on there and play around. All right. 
So those are like the specs on this. It's um, the build is interesting. Like, I mean, it has a unique aesthetic to it with the color that they are op uh, offering here. Like we have these colored accents down here and all that they come. This one's obviously green, but there's also orange, black and silver for these colored accents here. And like this lights up right there let's see if i can get it to quite there we go yeah you put it into standby and that light goes off as well this section right here is pretty sure that's plastic it is also like raised up above the rest of the the casing here so if this is flat on the table like this then it doesn't actually lay flat on the table this end is a little bit higher up right um there's also this thing here, which I think is like for you to put a keychain or, or a lanyard or something like that through if you want. Okay, um, easier to, to grab onto and hold onto there. All right, um, but like the metal casing here, I mean, it is metal as far as I know, but it seems a little thin and a little bit on the cheap side. Now that keeps weight down. It's not very heavy but it also does not necessarily exude quality, but for a $250 piece, like it seems fine. All right, other notable, notable features about the build, we have a 1080 by 720 resolution screen right here. The screen is actually pretty nice. You know, like all touch screens though, it gets really fingerprinty as you can see there in the reflection with my light. Okay, on one side we have the micro SD card and volume plus minus buttons. On the opposite side we have the power button here and like standby on off and we also have transport buttons here of play pause and track forward, track backward, okay, that sort of thing. On the top we have a hold switch, okay, you want it to keep settings where it is, you know, so you don't bump it, you can flip that on and off right there. On the bottom we have the 4.4 millimeter Pentacon headphone output, the 3.5 millimeter single ended headphone output, and the USB uh, C port, which is on a Hibby unit like this, handles charging, data transfer, and will also do SPDIF output if you wish. Okay, you can use this, I believe, as like a uh, a a, a DAC, like an outboard DAC for a computer too, like connecting this to a Windows or a Mac uh, computer, and this will be a, a DAC amp for you in that context. You could, if you want, also just use this as a transport and output bit perfect digital audio from the USB C port, either in USB form or via SPDIF, which is a, a, a feature that Hibby does here where they uh, use the USB port as an SPDIF output if you wish. Okay, but I mean, that's the build quality and the tour of the unit. It is an Android unit here. It, um, that, I mean, yeah, Android 12 operating system, fairly basic, fairly straightforward. Now, a lot of the apps, I mean, I could probably move these to this main screen here. I downloaded and used two apps, Rune Arc and USB Audio Player Pro. The Hibby music player is also on here. I believe that is this button right here. Yep. Okay. And I didn't use it very much just because I prefer the other two apps that I just showed you, but it is here. You do get access to the full Google Play stores and you can basically put any Android app on here that you want because it is an Android 12 operating system. Scroll it down here to get to like a bunch of different options. Okay internet, Bluetooth, you know, all that kind of stuff. Gain settings here. There are three gain uh, settings, low, medium, high, etc. I mean, if you're familiar operating an Android phone, it's going to be really easy to operate this device. Okay. No problems there. I mean, just Android operating system. So I found the navigation. Sorry about that reflection there. Let's move it over here. So that happens less. less. Okay. So I found it to be easy to use. The build quality is not like amazingly good, but it's solid, okay? Um, and like this, the speed of it, like I didn't really have any problems with load times or anything like that. It seems to be a relatively responsive device in terms of like how quickly it opens apps, how quickly it loads your, your music library, your playlists, and all of those sorts of things. No real complaints there. So let's get into the sound. So I just, just, uh, 
showed you like the two apps that I use for music. I put Rune Arc on here and then I also did uh, USB Audio Player Pro. So uh, Rune Arc, I primarily would have just used this as a Rune endpoint. And the one downside about doing that is like that does uh, with the internal DAC on this thing resamples all the audio to 48 kilohertz PCM files. Okay, that is if you use the headphone outputs on the device itself here. So that's not a problem with this device. That's a Rune Arc issue. But I mean, I love using Rune and Rune Arc. So like I use that for to play lossless um, and high res FLAC files either locally through my Rune uh, network or streamed V over Kobuz. Um, also some local DSD files again over Rune would have made their way in here. And then USB Audio Player Pro does do bit perfect audio with the internal DAC only locally though here. It will stream from Kobuz, but I didn't use it this way. I, that way I only played the same files that I have in my local Rune library. I had made a copy of on this micro SD card and played them locally using the USB Audio Player Pro app on here to get per bit perfect audio from the device itself. Okay, transducers that I used to listen to on here. Um, two pair of IEMs that I use. I have the FIO FH19 in for review, so stay tuned for that review. That's coming up. Played those on here. That got quite a bit of run. Also, the Kiwi Ears Quintet, which I reviewed recently, also got some time on here, so see the link in the description below for the review on that. And then, let's see, for full-size headphones, I tried my Focal Radiance the, and the Hi-Fi Men Ananda Nano, mostly just because those are relatively easy to drive full-size headphones. I did try briefly my Hi-Fi Men HE1000 SE to really get an idea of what the technical capability is of here. And the HE1000 e SE is not as easy to drive as the Radiance or the Ananda Nano, but it's also not overly difficult to drive. So on that subject real quick, I think you are going to want to use the balanced output as much as possible. A lot more power for one thing, but also like on devices like this, when there is a balanced output and they are designed to be balanced, that output almost always performs better. That is no difference um, here. So I did all of my evaluation using the 4.4 millimeter Pentacon output there to uh, drive those headphones and IEMs that I just named. And what did I find through that? Well, it does vary in its performance a little bit as to whether or not you're driving an IEM or a full-size headphone. The power output on this, even though it sounds pretty generous at 525 milliwatts into a 32 ohm load, which would have meant that there would have been, you know, 500-ish milliwatts going into the Radiance, the Nano, or even the, the Hi-Fiman HE1000 SE, those devices just didn't quite sound like they were properly driven all the time for me from this thing, even in high gain and even with the volume turned up a little bit. Um, that's kind of the downside to me a little bit is I don't think this is a, all that great a device for most full-size headphones. The Radiance was the best of those three full-size headphones that I, um, I named. Um, it sounded clean and clear and reasonably punchy, although not as impactful as I often hear it. So it was just a little bit, not badly, but just a little bit um, laid back in the bass impact in particular on that headphone. Spatial presentation and all of that on the Radiance was pretty good and all of the, and, and so forth. Um, on the, the two planars though, even though they are relatively easy driving in the Ananda Nano and the HE1000 SE, those two headphones, they, the, the bass extension really seemed to struggle a little bit. And when there was bass impact from like a kick drum or something like that, it sounded just a little bit splashy to me. And then like they just they sounded dry, um, which is not really the way this sounded with IEMs or the Radiance, but they just they sounded dry in, in a way that like the the uh, decays on of sounds were just a little bit over damped. And so like there was a little bit too much space between the trailing end of one tone and then the leading edge of, a, of the next tone uh, in there. So it just came across as a little bit dry. So even though the power output on this is, is you know, seems nice on paper, at $250 for a, a DAP that's got a lot of other things going on in it, I think the amplifier is just a little bit underpowered for most full-size headphones that are out there, even some that are ostensibly easier to drive. 
Okay, but let's talk about the performance with IEMs because that's really where this uh, woke up for me. And like particularly with those FH-19s, the sound just was uh, neutral. It was detailed and resolving. It had a lot of bass impact and extension and rumble to it and all that. Now, some of those is that I think those FH-19s, they so far, they seem to be pretty good as IEMs. But like through this device, like they were clean, they were clear, they were well resolving, they were smooth, they were non-fatiguing. Um, and all of that. So I attribute that to this piece here. Like it's an ESS based DAC in here, but it does not seem to suffer from like the stereotypical ESS problems of being too bright, too harsh, or metallic-y in the treble. The treble is nice and smooth and all of that. So on the IEMs, both of them that I tried, the tonal balance throughout the entire frequency spectrum was really good here with very good relationships between fundamental frequencies and their harmonics and so forth. And just like really, there were a lot Lots of instances, particularly with IEMs, where I was bobbing my head, tapping my foot, and that sort of thing um, as I was listening to music. I use this in like in mostly on the go settings. Like I tried it at the gym for a couple of days as the source there. I went for uh, dog walks and all of that with this. And uh, you know, I enjoyed those experiences. There were a couple of moments like um, I found myself, you know, like okay, I was. I wasn't listening to music while walking the dog. I was walking the dog while listening to music. And I think that is a compliment to what this thing can do, again, particularly with IEMs, when, uh, you know, when it's comfortable with driving uh, the transducer that it's powered into. And so really, the only complaint that I can come up with about the R4 for a device of this type at its price really is just that it doesn't have quite the power to drive the vast majority of full-size headphones out there to the potential that I would like to hear them driven. Focal Radiance did fairly okay, but Ananda Nano HE1000SE, like there was just something going on in there it was just a little bit off and I think it was just a little bit too dry and it just didn't quite have the control to tighten up the bass and to like handle the decay timing as well as it could have. But IEMs, they sounded really good on here. Okay, really, really good. And that's where I think a lot of people who, who uh, end up with this are you're gonna wanna use IEMs. But at $250 for everything that this can do with an Android 12 operating system and, and all of that, and like, you know, the screen is fairly nice and the build quality, while not great, it is sturdy and it is like uh, light, okay? Um, it's not gonna pants you if it's in your pocket, like, you know, some of the thicker hibbies, the R RS6, RS8, like those things are heavy. You put those in an elastic band pair of pants and you got to be careful. You're not going to have that, uh, that problem quite as much here on these, on this one, the R4 anyway. So that's generally my takeaway. I don't have a ton of comparison points for you with other devices here just because I have not heard as many daps as I have heard of other products. But here, having heard a lot of desktop gear and other mobile gear and all of that, I think $250 for this is actually a pretty good price. And it's got plenty of features and build quality and very decent sound quality, particularly with IEMs. And so it's a pretty nice package overall, I think, for a digital audio player. So if you are looking to get started in the DAP game, you know you're going to be using IEMs and uh, so forth, then this $250 piece is something you should definitely look into, and it's easy for me to recommend for IEM users who are looking to get into fully featured digital audio players. All right, I am Wave Theory. Thanks for watching my review of the Hibby R4. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment if you have not already. Uh, check out my PayPal, my Patreon. Generally do those things you do to support YouTube channels, and as always, enjoy the music. Bye.